Nestled on a gentle slope just above historic downtown Monterey, California, is a magical place, the Monterey Institute of International Studies. Although it's just a stone's throw from the nation's second largest national marine sanctuary, a short walk to California's first Capitol building, and a quick drive to the iconic majesty of Big Sur, this place holds its own special spell over those who study, work, or visit there. This is the story of the Monterey Institute, the story of a dynamic international learning community on California's central coast that offers students a launching pad to professional careers all over the world. The Monterey Institute of International Studies is one of the few truly international professional graduate schools there is. Every student who comes in um, has to have a second language competency, whether they want to be an interpreter, whether they want to teach English to speakers of other languages, whether they want to do policy or business. And so what makes it unique is we get students from all around the world who come in with a mindset that they want to take a master's because they want to help their careers to solve the world's problems. Monterey Institute offers a wide variety of immersive learning experiences that allow you to study abroad and make your dream internship a reality. Here are a few words from a student involved in the Frontier Market Scout program. So the Frontier Market Scout program is a program that is stationed here at Monterey Institute of International Studies that brings um, students from different campuses or even people who are not going to school who would like to be involved in the impact investing field. So the students come here, the participants come here and go through a three-week intensive training program that trains them on entrepreneurship and introduces them to the field of impact investing before sending the students to field placements in emerging markets. So this summer, as a Frontier Market Scout participant, I will be going to Kenya and I will be working with Invested Development, which has a partnership with the Frontier Market Scout program. And in this uh, field placement, I'll be helping the Kenyan partner to scout for business ideas, mainly in mobile technology and alternative energy. So Frontier Market Scouts, once, when, when they go to developing countries and these emerging markets, their work is to go out, talk to people, talk to entrepreneurs, and figure out where impact investing can really be involved, and figure out which are these emerging business ideas that can really make a difference for the people at the bottom of the pyramid. I chose to participate in the Frontier Market Scout program because it's one of very few programs existing out there that can introduce young people like me to this great field of impact investing. In 2009, along with a few colleagues from MISS, uh, we started Team Peru at the Monterey Institute. And Team Peru is a student group that works in Peru on development projects. Prior to coming to MISS, I had a relationship with a school director. Uh, we were friends and we determined that a school greenhouse was something very important for this community. The reason for this is that these schools exist at very high altitudes, some as high as 14,500 feet above sea level. They, they exist at such a high altitude 
that they can only grow certain crops, mainly potatoes and uh, certain varieties of grains. With cheap greenhouse technology, they're able to grow tomatoes at 14,500 feet. Um, and we knew the technology was accessible, and we worked really hard with the communities and the local government in order to uh, design and implement these projects. It ended up being very successful, and the Team Peru model ended up being very successful. Team Peru is a student-run organization, and it led to the foundation of the Andean Alliance for Sustainable Development, uh, which I work for currently. These projects allow students to learn sustainable greenhouse techniques, and also uh, the food grown in the greenhouse is eaten by the students, and each student receives uh, at least three servings a week of vegetables from this greenhouse. I've been working in these communities for the last uh, six, almost seven years, and I take a lot of pride in being able to work with these grad students, bring them down here, work on these projects. I know the communities get a lot out of them. We have a great relationship with the government, and that's the biggest benefit that I get from this project and from working with Team Peru. So I graduated from Miss in May of 2011, and ever since then I've been working full-time in Peru with the Andean Alliance for Sustainable Development. It's an organization that Aaron and I started while we were students at Miss, and uh, along with managing our programmatic operations, we still work very closely with students from Miss. Uh, we offer a model, uh, an experience called Team Peru, um, where students can come to Peru for anywhere between one and six months and work intentionally with our organization and applying the the work and the studies that they're learning in class in a professional environment with our organization. So it's a way for students' needs to be met with our organizational needs. For example, when students are learning about program evaluation or grant writing, we'll work directly with them to guide them through their course and make sure that they're aligned with the needs of our organization. And then during January and the summer, they'll come down to Peru and have the opportunity to implement their project in the field, whether it's internally within our organization, with a partner organization, or working directly with the communities in which we work with. If you're on campus, you can hear a million languages anywhere you go. Great learning experience. Flott læringsutbytte. Friends. Tomodachi. I came to the Monterey Institute in 1989 uh, and perceived the need to uh, create a program uh, and a center to address the threats posed by weapons of mass destruction. There was no such center or program at a university at that time, and so we decided to take the initiative uh, to create the Center for Nonproliferation Studies and very quickly built it in to the largest such program uh, internationally. One of the major proliferation challenges uh, in the past and today uh, is ignorance on the part of uh, citizens at large as well as their elected officials. The center attempts to use education and training to counter uh, that information deficit. I would say that the majority of our students when they leave the Monterey Institute seek positions in national governments and in international organizations. Uh, we have been very successful over the past two decades in placing uh, our students so much so that I think uh, we are deservably known as uh, the Monterey Mafia, with offices not only in Washington, but with branches uh, in Vienna, in Beijing, uh, in Moscow, in Tokyo, and many other places. The faculty and fellows of the Center for Nonproliferation Studies are so widely respected, they are often asked for expert opinions by national and global media. Well, for more on the deteriorating situation in Syria, I'm joined now by Bilal Saab, a fellow at the Monterey Institute for International Studies. Bilal, thanks very much for joining us. And with me is Leonard Spector, who's at the Monterey Institute of International Studies as deputy chief of its Nonproliferation Center. In the first session of Canada's 41st Parliament, in our second session this afternoon, we welcome Miles Pomper, who is a senior research associate at the James Martin Center for Nonproliferation Studies at the Monterey Institute for International Studies. <laughs> I 
I chose to attend the Monterey Institute for International Studies because of its uh, rigorous analysis and research. I specialize on nuclear non-proliferation, uh, and I've read multiple articles uh, from students, uh, professors, and analysts that are based here, and so that attracted me to come to this school and be part of that community. So one of my most memorable experiences here at MIS um, is the CNS non-proliferation simulation course. So um, I basically attended this class where the students interact like diplomats and we had to simulate a conference about nuclear non-proliferation. I was able to represent a country and I also chaired, uh, facilitated uh, multiple meetings. Uh, and because of that, uh, I learned so much about the treaty itself, um, how diplomats actually interact. And this course uh, resulted in an opportunity for me to actually go to Vienna, Austria and participate in the real uh, conference um, as part of a state delegation. So uh, that experience really translated into something concrete and something that I could potentially do in the future after MIS. The Center for the Blue Economy was motivated by the, um, the idea that we really needed a marine policy program in California. Uh, there is surprisingly no marine policy program in the entire state of California at the graduate level and Monterey we knew was the best place to do this uh, given the abundance of NGOs, government organizations and, and other groups, advocacy groups working for the oceans. We really wanted to put that policy piece here. We have the, the world's best scientists, the world's best um, labs. Um, we you know, have Stanford, we have Hopkins Marine Lab, we have Moss Landing, and we really wanted to complement that with a policy school for the state of California to look at global issues um, that affect the marine environment. Monterey Institute students are a very eclectic bunch. Uh, we get students from around the world. Uh, most of them, the demographic is their late 20s. They have some international experience. They have some uh, work experience abroad. Um, many of them are multilingual and uh, they share a passion for really wanting to take what they know and their experiences and, and become leaders um, to promote environmental conservation and protection. And uh, they're really an amazing group. They, they are you know, the, the purpose and, and the focus for, for what we do. And um, you know, sometimes we get some older students who are kind of going for second careers. So we have some students who are also right out of undergraduate. But that, that main demographic is kind of our late 20s international um, group that many of them realize that they've kind of hit a, a glass ceiling in terms of how much they can do without a graduate degree. Clubs at MIST are particularly unique because they allow for the student body each year to form and create the clubs that are of interest to them. So every single year, the clubs that are formed here at MIST are a reflection of the student body themselves and their interests and what they're passionate about. Clubs at MIST really enhance the student experience because they allow for another outlet outside of coursework and, and studying for students to get involved, to get familiar with different organizations, to create networks, and to really make their experience at MIST um, more valuable in the areas that are interesting to them. So what we're focusing on is international services, so educating the public about international humanitarian law, and also focusing on the measles initiative, um, which is an effort um, in collaboration with the Red Cross, UNICEF, the World Health Organization, and the Center for Disease Control. Well, the BUILD Club is BUILD stands for Beyond Yourself in Language Development. And what we do is provide free, fun, informal language classes to MISS students and also the larger Monterey community. Um, our BUILD teachers are MISS students in the graduate programs as well as some teachers from the Defense Language Institute and other Monterey community members. And our club is popular because MISS is an international school and everybody loves learning languages and we try to meet um, all of our students' needs and provide as many options as we can for them. Uh, I think the Build Club is pretty awesome because it's there are people that come here to learn how to teach foreign languages and so they're practicing their teaching skills of foreign languages and then everyone here is interested in learning foreign languages and 
foreign language study is usually pretty expensive um, if you take a formal class. So the coolest thing for me is that it's free and there are a lot of courses offered um, and it's pretty relaxed. Uh, you know, there are no grades or anything. You just learn what you want to. Um, so I, I took German in high school and forgot pretty much all of it. And so I wanted to try and get some of that back. And so I joined the build for German. What the school really offers is a career launch pad for the next generation of global problem solvers and transformational leaders who desire to address the global pressing issues of our time. On the other hand, our learning is very broad and integrative because we understand complex global problems hold no regard to disciplinary, sectoral, organizational, cultural, or geographical boundaries. And when we design our learning program, when we deliver our learning program, we have to keep our mind focused on these integrative problems by nature. So our programs encourage learning across disciplines, across culture, across sectors, and across organizational boundaries. And we also want to encourage the students to develop a synergy and integrative solutions to solve the global problems. I have met a lot of beautiful friends over here and obviously wonderful friends too who will be part of my life throughout my life. I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, also the fact that the teachers over here are very resourceful, very insightful and I uh, you know you can cater your own uh, program over here and that's very important because for, for a person like me who came from a developing country, I think if you want to go back to your country, you can, you can bring the expertise from here and then work there. And that's absolutely wonderful. I really enjoy the potluck and the karaoke at the Holland Center last week. I Holland Center I like the french fries in Samson. It's really good. I like Samson's <laughs> Yay! <laughs> the Graduate School of Translation, Interpretation, and Language Education is really the hub of international communication at the Monterey Institute. This is the school in which you come to learn your languages, to learn how to teach languages, to become an interpreter, a translator, or a localization management specialist. This is the school where you really learn how to successfully communicate across languages, across cultures, and it really gives people the tools they need to be successful wherever they go in the world, in whatever field that they're in. What's unique about our programs, I think, is the way in which we really train you in a practical manner. We want to be sure that whether you're studying to be a language teacher, a translator, interpreter, or a localization management specialist, that you have a lot of opportunities to use the skills that we're teaching you about. So our language um, teaching professionals really work in schools and language programs, designing curriculum, assessment tools, tests, training teachers. We really want to be sure that they have a lot of practical experience doing what it is that we're talking about in the classroom. Likewise for our translation, interpretation, and localization management programs. Of course, those are unique because there really aren't very many of those offered anywhere in the world, and um, particularly in the United States. So the fact that we're doing as much training as we are in these fields is already quite unique. But the quality of training that our um, interpreters and translators get is also very impressive. All of our faculty are practiced um, professionals in their fields. They're actively engaged. And they bring this experience back to the classroom. And they share that with their learners. And I think that really gives the students a real sense of what's going on out there in the field and a lot of practice working in the field even before they get out there. Along with clubs, student activity opportunities abound at Monterey Institute. An urban garden was established for those with a penchant for backyard agriculture which turned out to also be a great setting for cookouts and gatherings. 
it provided me an opportunity to grow my own vegetables in the thumb garden. And uh, now the cilantro and the tomato grows really well for me so that I have my own made vegetables. TEDx is an annual event at Monterey Institute and offers opportunities for students to share and learn about ideas and experiments with a large sector of national and international experts. At the annual International Bazaar, students, faculty, and the community come together for a multicultural celebration of song, dance, and delicious food. Each year, the Ms. Follies gives students a chance to share their talents with an audience of their peers. The Follies are very popular and entertaining. سلام من مسلم شاه من اصلا از افغانستان هم اینجا سال اولم از توی مس چیزی که در ارتباط با مس من دوست دارم اینه که خیلی محیط بین المللی است و هیچ وقت احساس بیگانه بیگانه نمی‌کنی در اینجا و فکر می‌کنی به خانه خودت هستی ام مس از ا ویری انٹرنیشنل کمیونیٹی آی آی اوریجینلی کم فرام افغانستان وین آی فرست تایم آی کیم هیر آی واز نات شور هاو ایت فیل ام بات Seeing a student and meeting students from all over the world is really inspiring, and I never felt a stranger or a foreigner in this community. The diversity, y la diversidad. Anywhere I go on campus, I can hear a different language. Uh, several things brought me to the Monterey Institute. Uh, one of the first and foremost being the ability to learn from career practitioners instead of career academics. Uh, professors that actually had substantial time in the field that were drawing from a mixture of their own personal experiences along with their education, as well as the rich cultural environment. Uh, it's not, there's not many places where you can go as a white male in the United States of America and be the minority in a classroom. So it's been a very rich experience. Uh, prior to coming to the Monterey Institute, I was a career soldier. I uh, finished just uh, under 13 years of service, and it was that service that actually led to my interest in the Monterey Institute. It was easier than I thought to frame the connection between my military service and my education at the Monterey Institute um, because it was during my military service when, for the first time, I guess my, my comfortable uh, middle class uh, Midwest American life, uh, I was introduced to true poverty and began to see uh, just the things that I wanted to change in the world uh, and drawing that to the whole uh, just the, the whole motto of MISS, of being the solution. I, I saw the problem that I wanted to be the solution for. Uh, I was able to connect that to my desire to transition from the military into pursuing international economic and social development work. After I leave the Monterey Institute with uh, Masters in International Public Administration with an emphasis on human security and development, I'm hoping to carry that into an organization such as Heifer International or World Vision as a program officer or program manager working, uh, directing and developing the grassroots community-based uh, projects that will be having a sustainable, lasting impact in communities all throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, through my time at MISS, uh, mainly with the help of many of the professors I've had, I've actually been able to draw many links between my military service and my education here, as well as what I'll be carrying into the future uh, within the development field, uh, pulling from uh, leadership experience, pulling from uh, time spent as an instructor, or leading small teams, or having to um, facilitate uh, through the assistance of an interpreter and constantly being placed into a stressful environment uh, with uh, limited resources and high expectations. Cross cultural mistakes, læringsvansker på tvers av kulturer. I love living two blocks from the ocean. I love getting out and sitting right by the water and enjoying this beautiful environment. New friends. Nye venner. The field that I work in can be very depressing, as you might guess. Uh, uh, focusing on issues of nuclear terrorism, the spread of weapons of mass destruction, and the like. Uh, the only way that I find myself uh, falling asleep at night is thinking of my students who bring a great deal of energy, uh, enthusiasm, and optimism uh, to, uh, to my program. Uh, that is reassuring uh, for me, and I think probably for uh, our nation as well. What I like best about working at the Monterey Institute is that we are kind of lean and mean. And I mean that by, since we're a small school and we don't have a big budget and we don't have the big name recognition for now, 
um, we really have to be cutting edge and we really know that we're competing against the best and that we have to do with, you know, with the little we have, we have to really promote excellence. And so I really like that dynamic. I like being at the cutting edge. I like the flexibility. I like the lack of, you know, big bureaucracy that really allows us to do really cutting edge things, innovative things and cr be creative. Um, and I think the center is, is a perfect example of that. The best thing about my job is really the privilege and the opportunity of working with amazing students from all over the world and seeing them grow in their ambition and aspiration and career capacity and also professionalism. It is also a joy to be around the young students and with perpetual creativity and playfulness. It is such a privilege, and this is really the best part of the job. What I love about my job is really every day is different. I've been at the Institute for a number of years now, and whether I was teaching classes or acting as an administrator now, um, I think what's so fascinating is the amount that's happening on campus. Um, all of our students bring in such diverse experiences from all different countries, all different language experiences, um, that every day is really something different, and I really appreciate that. We get about 800 students, and about 40% of our students are from overseas. And the 60% of the American students, most of them have lived and worked abroad. And given the second language requirement that's needed for admission, everyone comes in not only with some work experience, uh, but also with some language and international work experience. And so it makes it for a, like a mini United Nations. But another thing I think about when I think about the Monterey Institute students, uh, it's often stated that you have two kinds of people, the ones who uh, either wring their hands in despair or ones who can roll up their sleeves and you can't do both of them simultaneously. I think we tend to attract students who immediately feel like they need to roll up their sleeves whether they're attacking problems of poverty or sustainability or non-proliferation. So we get the doers. I think the graduate student being who they are as a professional school, we get the doers no matter where they're coming from. <laughs>